Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar. My name is Tim Cerniglia, and I'm the South Regional Manager for Schmidt. Today, we're going to talk about laser etching. Before we continue, I want to point you to the chat box on the right side of your screen. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can use that chat box to send us a message and our tech support team will reply shortly. While both etching and engraving vaporizes material to create depth, etching only vaporizes the top or cover layer, producing little to virtually no depth. On the other hand, engraving vaporizes the base material, creating notable depth in the mark. Etching works best on materials with more than one layer, such as coated metals and anodized aluminum. It even works great on rusted metals. The etching process vaporizes the coating to reveal the base material underneath. This usually creates a high contrast mark, which can be a desirable result when you really want your mark to stand out. It's particularly helpful when making marks that are going to be scanned. High contrast marks are much easier to read by data readers. Etching also preserves a material's structural integrity. If you're marking something thin or fragile, engraving may damage the part. Because etching only vaporizes the top layer of a part, it is much safer to use in that situation. Of course, engraving has its purposes too. Engraving is much better for parts that will endure a lot of wear and tear or will be post-processed. If you were to etch information onto a drill bit, for example, the mark will likely wear down and become illegible. Or, if you were to paint over an etched mark, you wouldn't be able to see the mark through the paint. However, a deep engraved mark can still be seen after being painted. Today, we'll demonstrate the differences between etching and engraving by marking these green anodized aluminum tags with our new Geomark Eco Plus. We'll first engrave a tag and etch a second tag, then compare the results. Here are the settings we'll use for engraving. The combination of high power and slow speed will allow the laser to vaporize more material with each pass. We'll use four different hatch angles to get a deeper mark. So here's the engraved tag. We'll take a closer look at this in a minute. For now, let's try etching a tag. To etch, we'll lower the power and increase the speed. This will reduce the amount of material that is vaporized. We'll also reduce the number of hatches to just two. We've found that these particular settings work best for marking this tag. You may need to adjust your settings depending on your application. Let's take a look at the two tags side by side. You can see that the etched tag has a whiter mark that really stands out. And just by looking at it, you can't tell that there's any depth to the mark. On the other hand, the engraved mark is darker with noticeable depth. Now, let's take a look at the other side of the engraved tag. Because the tag is so thin, you can see an imprint of the mark on the back. 
If you look at the tag from the side, you can see that the engraving process has caused it to warp, whereas the etched tag maintained its original shape. This is an example of how etching can be safer for delicate materials than engraving. Both engraving and etching are useful in the right applications. When deciding which process to use, make sure you understand the purpose of the mark, the material you're marking, and the conditions the part will be exposed to. That will help you determine if you should use your laser to etch or engrave. That's all the time we have for today. If you would like more information, we have several articles in our news section of our website, which can be found at www.gtschmidt.com forward slash news. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn for marking news and tips. Thanks for joining us for our webinar. We hope you join us again next month.